हेलो डियर फ्रेंड्स गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू माई सेल्फ हियर ललित कुमार पी भैया एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इलेक्ट्रॉनिक्स एंड टेलीकम्युनिकेशन इंजीनियरिंग डिपार्टमेंट भारतीय कॉलेज ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड टेक्नोलॉजी दुर्ग डियर स्टूडेंट्स इन लास्ट वीडियो वी हैव सीन द पार्ट मेजरमेंट ऑफ द स्ट्रेन टुडे वी विल गो फॉर द मेजरमेंट ऑफ द फोर्स इन रिलेशन विद द फोर्स स्ट्रेन एंड स्ट्रेस मेजरमेंट लेट अस सी दिस फोर्स स्ट्रेन एंड स्ट्रेस मेजरमेंट this part we have seen in the last video what is the strain strain is the amount of deformation of a body due to an applied force more specifically strain is defined as the fractional change in length strain can be positive that is tensile or negative that is compressive although dimensionless strain is sometimes expressed in units such as mm per mm in practice the magnitude of measured strain is very small therefore strain is often expressed as the micro strain mu epsilon which is epsilon into 10 raised to minus 6 and this is given as already we have seen in last video of strain gauges this strain is equal to delta l upon l where delta l is the change in length due to deformation and l is the original length where this epsilon is the strain and delta l is the extension or expansion or contraction and l is the original length when a bar is strained with a uniaxial force a phenomenon known as poisson's strain causes the cross section of the bar to contract in the transverse or perpendicular direction the magnitude of this transverse contraction is a material property indicated by the by its poisson's ratio this is the poisson's ratio poisson's ratio of a material is defined as the negative ratio of the strain in the transverse direction that is perpendicular to the force to the strain in the axial direction that is parallel to the force so this is the ratio of negative lateral strain upon longitudinal strain and for example this poisson's ratio for steel ranges from 0.25 to 0.3 and this ratio is given by minus del d upon del l into d by l or this is epsilon t upon this epsilon l where epsilon l and an epsilon t are the longitudinal and transverse strain strain is the intensity of the applied force per unit area stress is the intensity of the applied force per unit area so in last video we have seen the strain and just review of the strain we have seen now it is a stress straight stress is the intensity of applied force per unit area and this is given by sigma is equal to f by a the constant connecting stress and strain is called as the elastic is called as the modulus of elasticity e that is stress upon strain this is modulus of elasticity here is the measurement technique for measuring the force or sometimes you can say for measuring the stress also this is the spring 
which is connected fixed at the one end and this is the force applied to the other end and this is the pointer so a scale and pointer so if the force is applied there is a expansion of the spring accordingly this pointer will move and you will get the measurement on the scale and force is removed then there will be a deformation it will come in its original position and you will get the measurement of the force on the scale spring balance is frequently used to indicate the magnitude of the applied force that is f is equal to k into x where f is the applied force and k is called as the spring stiffness x is the spring displacement from its equilibrium equilibrium position f is equal to k into x this is another method called as the hydraulic load cell here is the hydraulic oil is there and this is a pressure gauge and this is diaphragm and force is applied here so hydraulic load cell applied load increases the oil pressure which is indicated by the pressure gauge so this is force in terms of the pressure it can be measured with the help of the diaphragm and the hydraulic oil this is another method called as the probing ring method probing ring you can see this this is the micrometer wheel this is called as micrometer wheel and this is a vibrating reed r and the force is applied here so when force is applied there will be a movement of this vibrating rod or vibrating reed and according to this vibrating reed there will be a movement of this micrometer wheel and as this micrometer wheel moves you will get the reading on this meter so this side and this side you can apply the force here so this is called as a probing ring method probing ring is an elastic ring which is employed for force measurement the force deflection relation of such ring is f is equal to k into x where f is the applied force k is the ring stiffness in previous case k was the spring stiffness here k is the ring stiffness constant and x is the ring deflection ring deflection is measured by a micrometer attached to the ring which we have seen in the figure deflection measurement may be made within plus minus 0.5 micrometer this is the range probing ring is used as a calibration standards for large testing machines strain gauge transducers electric resistance strain gauges are used to measure force electric resistance strain gauges are used to measure the force stress and strain strain gauge transducer is a device whose electrical resistance varies in proportional to the amount of the strain and this amount of strain is due to the force this is the strain gauge configuration you can see last in last video we have seen this electrical resistance strain gauge if the strain is applied on this force is applied on this then there will be a deformation of this coil or foil and the resistance of this plates will change and this resistance will be calibrated in terms of the current or voltage for the measurement of the force the metallic strain gauge consists of very fine wire or more commonly 
मेटेलिक फाइल अरेंज इन ए ग्रीड पैटर्न एफ द ग्रीड पैटर्न मैक्सिमाइज द अमाउंट ऑफ मेटेलिक वायर आर फाइल सब्जेक्ट टू ए स्ट्रेन इन पैरल डायरेक्शन द ग्रीड इज बाउंडेड टू ए थिन बैकिंग कॉल द कैरियर विच इज अटैच डायरेक्टली टू द टेस्ट स्पेसिमन अनस्ट्रेन रेजिस्टेंस रेंजेस फ्रॉम वन ट्वेंटी टू सेवरल हंड्रेड ओहम्स बिकॉज ए सिग्निफिकेंट लेंथ ऑफ वायर आर फाइल इज नेसेसरी टू प्रोवाइड हाई अनस्ट्रेन रेजिस्टेंस मेटल स्ट्रेन गेजेस कैनॉट बी मेड एक्सट्रीमली स्मॉल द गेज प्रोवाइड्स एन आउटपुट प्रपोर्शनल टू द एवरेज स्ट्रेन इन देयर एक्टिव एरिया स्ट्रेन गेज इंस्टॉलेशन हाउ टू इंस्टॉल दिस स्ट्रेन गेज फॉर द मेजरमेंट ऑफ स्ट्रेन आर फोर्स मेटल स्ट्रेन गेजेस आर यूजली बॉन्डेड ग्लूड टू दी सरफेस वेयर स्ट्रेन इज टू बी मेजर्ड इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट दैट द स्ट्रेन गेज बी प्रॉपरली माउंटेड ऑन टू द टेस्ट स्पेसिमन सो दैट द स्ट्रेन इज एक्यूरेटली ट्रांसफर्ड फ्रॉम द टेस्ट स्पेसिमन दो द एडेजिव एंड स्ट्रेट गेज स्ट्रेन गेज बैकिंग टू द फाइल इट सेल्फ स्ट्रेन गेज प्रिंसिपल द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द मटेरियल इज गिवन बाय आर इज इक्वल टू रो यल इन टू रो यल अपॉन ए दैट इज रो यल अपॉन पाई इन टू डी स्क्वेर पाई इन टू डी स्क्वेर बाय फोर वेयर आर इज द रेजिस्टेंस ऑफ द वायर रो इज द वायर मटीरियल रेजिस्टिविटी यल इज द वायर लेंथ एंड डी इज द वायर डायामीटर suppose this wire is now stressed by the application of a force f then we know that the material elongates by some amount it is also true that in such stress strain condition although the wire lengthens its volume will remain nearly constant it follows that if the volume remains constant and the length increases then the area must decrease by some amount because both length and area have changed we find that the resistance of the wire will be also changed this is the equations del r upon r is equal to del rho upon rho plus del l upon l Minus twice del d upon d, where del r, del l, and del p, and del d, del rho and del d, are the changes in wire resistance, wire length, wire resistivity, and diameter. R, l, rho, and d are the resistance, length, resistivity, and diameter of the wire. So del d by d is equal to minus this new into del l by l this new is the modulus of elasticity del r by r is equal to del l by l into 1 plus 2 new sorry it is a strain uh, modulus of elasticity 1 plus 2 new so this is the gauge factor 1 plus 2 new <clears throat> where j is the constant depend upon the wire material and called as the gauge factor the change in the resistance is given by the equation which is the basic equation that underlies the use of metal strain gauges because it shows that the strain converts directly into a resistance change strain gauge measuring principle the basic technique of strain gauge measurement involves attaching 
or gluing a metal wire or file to the element whose strain is to be measured. As a stress is applied and the element deforms, the strain gauge material experiences the same deformation if it is securely attached. Because strain is fractional change in length, the change in strain gauge resistance reflects the strain of both the gauge and the element to which it is secured. <coughs> strain gauge materials Strain gauges are made of material that exhibits significant resistance changes. Significant resistance change when strained. That means when it is applied by a force. This change is the sum of three effects. First, when the length of the conductor is changed, it undergoes a resistance change approximately proportional to the change in length. Second, in accordance with the poison effect, a change in the length of a conductor causes a change in its cross-sectional area and a resistance change that is reverse proportional to the change in area. Third, the piezoresistive effect, a characteristic of the material, is a change in the bulk resistivity of a material when it is strained. All strain gauge material exhibits these three properties. But the piezoresistive effect varies widely for different materials. Strain gauges are made of specially formulated alloys with relatively large piezoresistive effects. Silicon alloys are commonly used to manufacture of strain gauges. Specification of the strain gauges in ohm resistance, in watt power, gauge factor, in mm by mm dimensions are the main specifications of the electric strain gauge. These are the specifications. What is the resistance in ohm, power in watts, gauge factor and dimension are the main specifications of the electric strain gauge. Strain gauges are available commonly with nominal resistance values from 30 to 3 kilo ohms with 120, 350 and 1000 ohm being the most common values used. A fundamental parameter of the strain gauge is its sensitivity to strain expressed quantitatively as the gauge factor. Gauge factor is defined as the ratio of fractional change in electrical resistance to the change in length strain. The gauge factor for metallic strain gauges is typically around 2. Strain gauges circuit strain gauge circuit wheat stone bridge generally these strain gauge have the gauges in which resistance are changes and therefore these strain gauges are mounted in a wheat stone bridge one of the arm is containing with the wheat stone bridge this bridge is not shown here in practice the strain measurement is rarely involved quantities larger than a few millistrian millistrain. Therefore, to measure the strain requires accurate measurement of very small changes in resistance. For example, suppose a test specimen undergoes a strain of 500. A strain gauge with a gauge factor of 2 will exhibit a change in electrical resistance of only 2 into 500 into 10 raised to minus 6 is equal to 0.1% for a 120 ohm gauge this is a change of only 0.12 ohm so this is the min minor changes with respect to the gauges to measure such a small change changes in resistance strain gauges are almost always used in a bridge configuration with a voltage excitation source 
The general Wheatstone bridge consists of four resistive arms with an excitation voltage VEX that is applied across the bridge. The bridge is said to be balanced. That is output voltage is zero. If R1 is equal to R3 is equal to R2 into R4. R1 R1 into R3 is equal to R2 into R4. That is the normal condition of the Wheatstone bridge balancing the bridge. Any change in resistance in the in any arm of the bridge will result a non-zero output voltage. The output voltage V0, V0 could be determined by the following equation of the Wheatstone bridge. V0 is equal to VEX that is applied voltage upon 4 into del R del R1 by R1 minus del R2 by R2 plus del R3 by R3 minus del R4 by R4. So this is the equation to get the output voltage when applied force is there on the strain gauge and change in resistance is occur. Single active that is quarter bridge. If we replace the resistance in one arm of the bridge with an active strain gauge, any changes in the strain gauge, resistance will unbalance the bridge and produce a non-zero output voltage. If the nominal resistance of the strain gauge is designated as RG, then the strain induced change in resistance can be expressed as del RG upon RG is equal to G into epsilon. Then you can write the bridge equation can be rewritten V0 is equal to VEX into G into epsilon upon 4. This is the equation for the output voltage. This is the half bridge equation. Half bridge means strain can be doubled by making both gauges active in a half. Half bridge configuration. This half bridge configuration yields an output voltage that is linear and approximately doubles the output of the quarter bridge circuit. So this output is V0 is equal to VEX into G upon 4 upon epsilon G1 minus epsilon G2. This is with respect to full bridge. Four arms of the bridge. All four arms of the bridge active strain gauges in a full bridge. The output voltage is equation given by this EG1 minus EG2 epsilon G1 minus epsilon G2 plus epsilon G3 minus epsilon G4. So this equation you can write for the output voltage when in all the four arms these strain gauges are there. That is full bridge. Signal conditioning for strain gauges. What are the requirements for the strain gauges? Bridge completion. Bridge should be completed. Strain gauges are offered in several different configurations. Quarter bridge, half bridge and full bridge. So necessary registers are required to make the Wheatstone bridge. Excitation voltage is required. And you know the gauge factor is if available. So these are the conditions. Then amplification is required after this bridge output because the strain gauges provides the very small signal and therefore we need the amplifier. And this is the measurement of a strain or you can say this is the measurement of the force also. Thank you very much for listening this today's video. In next video we will give we will go for the another new topic of your syllabus. So thank you very much. If you have any difficulty or doubts you can ask me at any time on any platform without any hesitation please. Thank, thanks a lot. Thank you very much.